Today's episode is brought to you by Nomad. Go to the Flathead's best manufacturer, Nomad is a longtime supporter of the local community and sports scene, celebrating 20 years of building great careers in mission focused custom vehicles. Nomad, a Montana based company making a global impact. Visit nomadgcs.com for more info. That's nomadgcs.com for more information. Welcome back to another episode of the Interlake Sports Now. I'm Josh Dugan, and after a few weeks away from the game, it's time to get back in action and get all caught up on the latest and greatest sports news the Valley has to offer here in Northwest Montana. Definitely a heavy football twist on this week's episode as prep football and college football are starting soon. And the NFL, we have a little NFL news related to a Kalispell product. You can put two and two together. He's playing a little preseason for the Seahawks. We'll get to that soon. A little Patty O'Connell talk. So, Starting out, we are going to catch up on some prep recruiting news in the football world. Like I said, we're going to move into that Patrick O'Connell talk, former Glacier High product, Grizz star, now trying to catch on with the Seahawks, and he's having some success, so we'll definitely dive into that. We're going to move into our first ever Ultimate Fighting Championship, a.k.a. the UFC, news on the show with Helena Native, Sugar Sean O'Malley, making some major headlines and representing the state of Montana well. And then we're going to close things out with a little look at how Glacier and, excuse me, we're going to look at both Glacier and Flathead's football schedules for the season. And we actually do have a couple other schools. We're going to see their week one matchups for the prep football. What are those big Valley matchups on the horizon to start out the season? And then we do have some exciting Range Riders news to wrap up the show regarding the team in Glacier Bank Ballpark. So let's get this show rolling. It's been a while. I'm happy to be back in action. So First off, we had Columbia Falls quarterback and linebacker Cody Schweiker announce his commitment on Twitter to the University of Montana. Quote, thank you to all the people who have supported me. I am blessed to be able to live out every Montana's kid's dream and commit to play football for the Montana Grizzlies, he tweeted. Last year, Schweiker threw for 2,380 yards and 23 touchdowns while racking up 93 tackles on defense. The Wildcats went 7-3 and last season, losing to eventual state champion Lewistown 14-6 in the quarterfinals. I had the opportunity to watch Cody Schweiker play quite a few times last year. Very talented playmaker on uh, offense. High football IQ. Dad's a coach. You could see that one coming. Smart kid on the field. And he can make the big throws, extend plays with his legs in the pocket as a quarterback, get out of the pocket and scramble a little. And on defense, one of those dudes with a nose for the ball is playing two-way at quarterback and linebacker. That says a lot about your football acumen and toughness and willing to get out there and leave it out on every play. So, Regardless if he ends up on the offensive side of the ball or defensive side of the ball, it seems like the University of Montana got a good one in the Columbia Falls product, Schweikert. So next up, the Grizzlies picked up another commitment from a Valley product with Glacier Wolfpack tight end and defensive end Isaac Keim. Quote, I'm super excited to announce my commitment to Montana after a great conversation with Grizz Director of Recruiting, Keaton Johnson, Kaim tweeted, I would like to thank family, friends, and everyone else that has helped me with this journey. Kaim joins Wolfpack teammate Kashko Achea as Grizzly commits and in other Glacier Wolfpack recru- cr- recruiting news, excuse me, we talked about Go Achea a few weeks ago on the show and how he's a legacy commit, but another Glacier Wolfpack m- football player announced their commitment to FCS Powerhouse North Dakota Bison, and that is offensive lineman Henry Sellers. You can't teach size. Sellers is a prototype prototype offensive lineman, six foot five, 270 pounds, and he had this to say about his announcement to play for the Bison. Quote, super excited and honored to announce my commitment to NDSU football after a great conversation with head coach Matt Entz. Sellers tweeted, thank you so much to those who have supported me through my journey thus far. In an article by the Daily Interlakes, Fritz neighbor Sellard said he picked the Fargo school over the Montana State Bobcats, Montana Grizzlies, and FBS's Akron Zips. So, had some competition there. Sellard's, you know, Montana kid. Maybe people are like, oh, I want to see him stay in state. But North Dakota Bison is a school that there is n- nothing to laugh at there. That's about as good as it gets in the FCS. They just had uh, one of their offensive linemen, I believe his name was Cody Mock, Cody Mock, something like that. He was a pretty high NFL draft pick. So if you're a lineman trying to make it, North Dakota is a school they're looking at. Similar to like linebackers for the Grizz, offensive linemen for the Bison, it's a good fit. The Bison have won 149 of 161 games since 2011, and they are 49-7 and seven in four seasons under Coach Eds, who guided NDSU to the FCS title in 2019 and 2021 and a runner-up last season. So 
The Wolfpack, they have one heck of a football program under head coach Grady Bennett, so no surprise to see a trio of current Wolfpack players setting their sights on playing at the next level and more to come probably throughout the season. Next up, speaking of Glacier High products who went on to play at the next level, former Grizz and Glacier High star Patrick O'Connell. According to Grizz Communications Director Eric Tabor, O'Connell did earn the start Saturday in the preseason game for the Seahawks. Staying in the Northwest. O'Connell scored the start during that Seahawks preseason matchup with the Cowboys and made his presence felt early and often. He grabbed a ta- wrapped up a t- for a tackle on the second play of the game on defense for the Seahawks and finished with seven total tackles, which was second highest on the team. So he seems to be finding his groove at the next level in a hurry. And prior to Saturday's action, the Sports Illustrated affiliate blog All Seahawks published an article titled Seahawks linebacker O'Connell making a legitimate roster push. And in that article, here's what Seahawks head coach Pete Carroll had to say about the Glacier High product when asked about O'Connell during media availability. Quote from Pete Carroll, Patrick has done a nice job. He's done a really good job in camp and has been really consistent. I don't know what it is, but he's got a feel for it. He didn't always play inside linebacker. He's been in some other spots growing up. His Montana days served him well. Gotta love that. He's a really good football player. He had two legitimate, really good tackles, form hits, and good reads. He had, he's had an interception on the field out here in high-tempo drills. Sounds like O'Connell's making plays. And when the head coach of the Seattle Seahawks is has this kind of a praise for an undrafted free agent, and especially a guy like Pete Carroll, who's known for his defensive acumen, that's a good sign for O'Connell, representing the city of Kalispell well, represent Montana well, Grizz Nation. So you got to love that. Rooting for Patio to catch on there with the Seahawks. And it sounds like Coach Pete Carroll saying the right things that lead me to believe that's the trajectory it's going because linebacker is a position that you can make an impact early. You get out there, you have a nose for the football, whether it's special teams or in the rotation, they're going to find a place for you. And it sounds like from what Pete Carroll's seen so far, Patrick O'Connell is one of those guys making his presence felt in camp. That's what it's all about. So, got to love that. Now, another piece of Montana sports news worth mentioning. I said it's the first ever UFC news we've ever had on the show, mixed martial arts news. Helena Native and UFC star Sugar Sean O'Malley recently defeated Aljamain Sterling in a title fight to be named the new UFC undisputed bantamweight champion of the world. Well done by O'Malley, putting Helena on the map on the big stage. Awesome stuff, represent Montana well. He won the fight by knockout in the second round and undoubtedly is becoming one of the biggest stars to ever hail from the Big Sky State in recent memory. People are comparing him to the next Conor McGregor type of star in the UFC. If you follow UFC, you know what that means. If you don't follow UFC, it's kind of like saying, you know, I'm not going to compare him to Michael Jordan or LeBron. But that's the type of star power that a guy like Conor McGregor historically has. So if O'Malley's getting those comparisons, just from a star power perspective, that's a heck of an accomplishment for the Montana kid. And, you know, awesome stuff to see. Just had to give him the shout out there. You love to see that. So let's move it along now. The last thing we're going to get to, I said before, is a little bit of baseball talk to wrap up the show. Last football topic. We kind of bounced around football to UFC, back to football. Let's get the Flathead and Glaciers schedules for the upcoming football season that starts this Friday. Just so everybody's in the loop of what games to keep an eye out for this year and all that fun stuff. Let's start out with the Flathead Braves who kick things off with a road matchup for CMR in Great Falls Friday, August 25th. After that, the Braves have their home opener September 2nd versus Belgrade and follow that up with another home matchup as they host Missoula Big Sky at Legend Stadium September 8th. After that is a road matchup with Missoula Sentinel on September 14th and then back-to-back home games versus Butte and Helena High who will be coming to town September 22nd and September 28th, 28th being Helena, 22nd being Butte. That leads to the biggest game of the year for the Braves other than playoff action as they take on crosstown rival Glacier at Legend Stadium Thursday, October 5th before closing out their regular season with the home finale versus Capital October 13th. And their final game of the regular season comes on the road versus Missoula Hellgate on Thursday, October 19th. Really looking forward to covering the Braves on the gridiron this season. Had a lot of fun out at the Braves slash Brock Osweiler football camp a few weeks ago, about a month ago now. And head coach Caleb Allen, the second year with the program, as far as head coaching, had a couple years assistant there, I believe. But trending in the right direction. A lot of talent. 
who come back from last year. Brody Thornsberry is a name to watch on the outside receiver slash playmaker. Gabe Sims, another guy I remember who stood out as far as he's coming back. He's going to be a guy to watch. So a lot of talent there for the Braves. Excited to catch a lot of games this year. Next up, we got the Glacier Wolfpack schedule for 2023. Glacier starts things out with a home matchup first Great Falls Friday, August 25th, and takes the road to play Billing Senior September 1st and Butte. On September 8th, before returning to Legend Stadium to take on Helena High. After that, they'll take on Hellgate in a matchup at Washington Grizzly Stadium in Missoula. Then the Wolfpack get their first back-to-back home games with Helena Capital coming to down September 29th. And then Crosstown Action versus Flathead. They were listed as the home team, I believe. So, then to close out the regular season, the Wolfpack will travel to Missoula to take on Big Sky before their home finale on October 19th versus Missoula Sentinel. Both the Braves and Wolfpacks will have their eyes set on a trip to the Montana Class AA State Championship, which takes place November 17th, to conclude the 2023 Montana High School football season. So, that's going to be the one everyone has circled on their calendar that you're hoping to punch a ticket to that big game. The season comes to an end. It'll be November 17th. It seems like a long ways away, but pretty soon we'll be recapping this season. Football season, once it gets going, it starts flying. So enjoy it while we can. Other matchups to watch as far as week one goes, Whitefish will take on perennial Class A power. Hamilton at the Dog Pound at Whitefish, and Columbia Falls will take the road to play Frenchtown. Last up for the prep football in week one to keep an eye on, Big Fork is making their Class A debut in the battle for Flathead Lake as they take on Polson and the Pirates, the Polson Pirates. That being said, that's going to be a fun one to kick off the year. First game in Class A for Big Fork, moving up from Class B. They've been a power at Class B. Now it's time to see how they do in Class A. What a start to play one of your rivals down at the other side of the lake in Polson. So that'll be a fun one. A lot of awesome games to kick off the season in prep football right here in Northwest Montana. And, hey, let's just hope that smoke clears up a little bit. I know we got some rain that usually helps, but we'll see how it goes. But either way, it's going to be primetime high school football under the lights soon in Northwest Montana. So one last note. The Valley's pro baseball team, the Glacier Range Riders, they'll be back home soon after a lengthy road trip for a six-game homestand versus the Missoula Paddleheads. If you're looking for some fun to close out the summer, that's a great opportunity to get out to Glacier Bank Ballpark, watch some great quality baseball. And one other thing worth mentioning, this was the news I teased a little bit in the head intro there. Very excited for Valley baseball fans and people who have a lot of pride in this area. The Glacier Bank Park was recently voted the best MLB partner ballpark in the country in a contest held by BallparkDigest.com. Here's the write-up from Ballpark Digest publisher Kevin Reichard highlighting the Riders and Glacier Bank ballpark. So what an accomplishment. Here, here's the article, quote, In only its second year of operation, Glacier Bank Park has captured the attention of the baseball world. The home of the Pioneer League's Glacier Range Riders, Glacier Bank Park, was voted the fan favorite in Ballpark Digest MLB Partner League's Best of the Ballparks vote, defeating Hinchcliffe Stadium, home of the New Jersey Jackals of the Frontier League, in the championship round. The vote covering the top 32 partner leagues, ballparks from the American Association, Atlantic League, Frontier League, and Pioneer League started in a bracket-style competition, and Glacier knocked out Quite a few teams along the way. They listed all of them. I'm not going to go through that. But it did say over 78,000 fans voted at least once in the course of the competition, a record for the MLB Partner League's votes. So you could say that the votes were coming in from all over the place. It wasn't just like someone was stuffing the ballots. Glacier Bank Park, what an accomplishment. Located in Kalispell in the Flathead Valley, Montana, Glacier Bank Park opened in 2022 is home of the Range Riders, providing fans with a scenic local locale and upscale fan experience can't argue that the ballpark features landscape seating areas with natural elements from the site and surrounding geography group gathering areas a children's play area and leading rails throughout from the range riders quote we're inc- incredibly grateful for the community support we received for the ballpark digest best mlb partner league ballpark award that's a tongue twister but hey i got it glacier bank park was built because our ownership loves the game of baseball it's a completely modern facility but feels nostalgic we're thankful for the fans who have visited our ballpark who voted and look forward to welcoming new fans who were made aware of our, our ballpark because of this honor one last note from ballpark digest publisher kevin reichard quote this was an impressive win for the range riders and their fans said ballpark digest publisher kevin reichard as i just said Both finalists are great examples of how passion for the game is applied to the fan experience. In the case of Glacier Bank Park, the ballpark and the team immediately became integral parts of the community. Overall, what an amazing accomplishment for the Range Riders. I said a few months back before the season, I I felt a little biased. I said, I think 
Glacier Bank Park is the best atmosphere to catch a ball game in the country. I've made the comment, you get a $20 ticket and a million dollar view in the background. Great food, great atmosphere. And I felt biased. I was, I said it on the show, maybe I'm biased living here in the Valley. 78,000 people agreed with me. It was the best as far as the partner leagues go. So I feel a little less crazy there. So got to love that. Congrats to the range riders and their organization as a whole on the accomplishment. Got to love that. And really, I mean, it is becoming a staple of the Valley as far as people I talk to. Maybe you don't go to every game, but when you make it out to a range rider game, it makes a lasting impression. And that's special. That's what it's all about. Whether you're just a diehard baseball fan looking to get out on the road and do some fun, bring the family, whatever. There's so many options. So, Overall, got to love that. Congrats to the Range Riders. So that will do it for this week's episode of the Interlake Sports Now. It's been a long couple weeks away from the Northwest Montana Sports Talk game, but I'm happy to be back in action. Thank you all for tuning in on next week's show. You can expect a big-time prep football roundup, see how all our local squads did, and college football kicks off next next weekend. So the Grizz and Bobcats, you know we're going to be covering that getting into all the action as well as the rest of the fall sports that are about to start taking flight pretty soon. I believe golf is already ramping up, so we'll get you filled in and all that fun stuff. As always, y'all, I'm Josh Dugan. I'm out. Thank you, as always, Northwest Montana, for tuning in. It's been a while, but it's always fun to dive back into the action. And with football starting up, the action's about to get going more than ever. So let's enjoy it, y'all. Everyone stay safe out there. Enjoy this little bit of rain while we can. And hopefully that smoke keeps on clearing up and these fires mellow out for football season and just everybody in general because I think we're all a little burnt out on that. That's for sure. Everybody, have a good one. Josh Dugan, I'm out. Today's episode is brought to you by Nomad. One of the Flathead's best manufacturer. Nomad is a longtime supporter of the local community and sports scene, celebrating 20 years of building great careers and mission focused custom vehicles. Nomad, a Montana based company making a global impact. Visit nomadgcs.com for more info. That's nomadgcs.com for more information.